perfecto. Hola, 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 muy buenas tardes, yo soy Plaqueta y es un honor para mí darles la bienvenida a este evento Conversaciones Urgentes en el Día de la Tierra. Primero que nada, darle muchísimas gracias a What Design Can Do por la invitación, a la Fundación Ford por el apoyo para organizar estos eventos y sobre todo gracias a la colaboración de If Not Us, Then Who y a la Alianza Mesoamericana de Pueblos y Bosques. Hoy vamos a tener dos paneles de conversaciones urgentes, como el título indica. Y son urgentes porque ya se nos indicó, ya se nos dijo, se nos advirtió, se nos señaló que los modelos de desarrollo actuales son insostenibles para el planeta y que además están siendo injustos para la mayoría de las personas. Eh, y es el colmo que todos los días nos lamentemos sobre la crisis ambiental y la vemos en los medios, leemos sobre ella... Y pues obviamente a todos y a todas nos toca padecer fragmentos del problema, pero seguimos con soluciones paliativas, con soluciones cosméticas y también pensando en que depositar la responsabilidad de los individuos es la solución. Y nos está faltando cuestionar procesos estructurales. Um, we should start questioning this, uh, the things, but we need to discuss this. It's complex, but we need to discuss it. And today we are focusing on design. Design is a very powerful tool, and many times we give it for sure, but actually it's present in, any, in everything we do. In today's program, we will have a panel about decolonization of design and sustainability. And after that, we will have a Uh, short. And after that, we will have a panel about cultural appropriation at 7.30. Please stay with us because it will be very good. First of all, I, we will start with messages of two very fundamental people of these events that actually are two events in one. Uh, the first person is Richard Van der Lacken, which is the CEO and founder of What Design Can Do. And Levi Sucre, which is the coordinator of the Mesoamerican Alliance of Peoples and Forests. Let's see them. Van der Leyen. I'm the founder of What Is I Can Do and the creative director based here in Amsterdam. So, hello from Amsterdam and welcome everyone to Urgent Conversations on Earth Day. Today, We focus on what's urgent in our fight for climate justice. As we build a sustainable future, it is important to ask which practices are we leaving behind and which are we carrying forward? It is important future. that we are gathering today and why the themes decolonizing design and sustainability and cultural appropriation matter to what design can do. It's a conversation that we started a few months ago uh, with Anushka Kwandela, a British Nigerian designer, and Sunny Dolet, a fashion designer uh, from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, this was focusing on the issue in Africa, but of course this is a global thing that needs to be addressed. And we think that it is very important that What Design Can Do is one of those organizations that brings these topics to the table. So if we want to achieve this uh, desirable future that we're all fighting for, we need to work on these vital issues. We need to understand each other and find valuable ways to collaborate. I want to thank the Ford Foundation. Without their support, um, uh, we would not have been able to put this together. I also 
want to thank, if not us, then who? And the Meso-American Alliance of Peoples and Forests for this fantastic collaboration. Thank you. We need to make sure we work together with these indigenous organizations and experts when addressing these urgent issues. So we are today in good company. For your information, uh, what is going to do plans to continue addressing the themes of the evening in the future. And we sincerely hope to continue working with the Ford Foundation, if not us, then who, and the Meso-American Alliance of Peoples and Forests. So keep an eye out for what Design Can Do events in the fall in Amsterdam, Mexico City, and Sao Paulo and Rio. We sincerely hope to see you there again. For now, I wish you a very inspiring evening and an insightful time. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Espero verte pronto a la vida real. Hasta luego from Amsterdam. Eh, gracias, Richard, por permitirme eh, conversar sobre este tema y bienvenido sea la audiencia a este foro virtual. Eh, mire, desde mi, mi nombre es Levi Sucre Romero, soy indígena Auriuri, eh, coordinador de la Alianza Mesoamericana de Pueblos y Bosques. Y desde la Alianza Mesoamericana de Pueblos y Bosques damos eh, un enfoque de trabajo basado en el conocimiento cultural de los pueblos indígenas sobre la conservación y convivencia con los recursos naturales. El, nuestros principios culturales nos dictan cómo nosotros debemos eh, trabajar eh, o convivir con los, con los recursos naturales y ese conocimiento nos ha permitido por muchos años eh, sobrevivir eh, y, y compartir y por eso no es, eh, eh, no es un secreto ni es un invento nuevo de que los estudios científicos hoy demuestran que los pueblos indígenas somos unos actores importantes en la conservación de los bosques, en protección de la diversidad que tanto eh, le hace bien ahora a la humanidad, sobre todo por el efecto del cambio climático, eh, las pandemias eh, y, y, y todo lo que tiene que ver con conservación de los bosques, será el, el, el tema del futuro, eh, conservar los recursos naturales y el conocimiento de los pueblos indígenas tiene mucho que aportar esto, no solamente para nuestra propia sobrevivencia, sino también para la humanidad. Eh, pero siempre estamos en riesgos, corremos muchos riesgos de... de, de como pueblos indígenas, uno es que los derechos a la tierra se nos vulneralizan, los, los intereses económicos eh, tratan de, de arrebatar eh, los recursos naturales y aún los estados y las políticas eh, nacionales y globales no reconocen el, este conocimiento de los pueblos indígenas como un aporte esencial eh, para combatir el cambio climático y pandemias. Apenas se recién se empieza a visualizar eh, eh, pues que, que, que se, alguna comunidad científica empieza a, a, a poner los ojos en este conocimiento de los pueblos indígenas y nosotros desde la Alianza Mesoamericana de Pueblos y Bosques pues estamos dispuestos y anuentes a compartir con todos ustedes y con los que quieran lo que sabemos como pueblos indígenas para una convivencia no solamente de nuestro pueblo sino de la humanidad. Eh, gracias por estar aquí eh, compartiendo con nosotros y bueno ya eh, espero poder en el futuro tener una conversación más profunda sobre este tema y, y agradecido con Richard por este espacio. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias a Richard y a Levi por estos mensajes. Y ahora vamos con unas palabras. And now we are having some words from María Pedro de Pedro, who is a leader Maya with a impressive history. She is president of the Association of Forestry Uh, community forestry in Guatemala, uh, dedicated to the sustainable management of uh, Guatemala, which is, uh, and also was, uh, she earned the prize, the Equator Prize of the UNPD. She will talk about the measures that will help us to understand about the indigenous vision about environment. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, a hug for everyone from our organization, AMEDIC, which is uh, in Guatemala. And this time we are sharing with you through a long distance, but we are sharing uh, what is our cosmovision. It is uh, the way of the Maya people to see and understand the life and the harmony among Mother Nature and human beings. 
the way as it is related, that they are related with all the beings in nature is the way of feeling, of thinking, of analyzing and of acting to understand this relation among human beings and nature. So in other words, our cosmovision is the conception of how Maya people conceive the universe, the maintenance of the harmony in the cosmos. The harmony, for example, among Mother Nature and human being involves a permanent worry because the, for the environment. Uh, because of that, Maya population have some principles and values. When I talk about principles, we talk about gratitude and thankfulness. These are the more developed values in our communities. It is very important to teach this in, inside the family and also in the society. We thank for the favors. We thank for the sunshine, for the sunset, for the sunrise, the morning, the rest. Of course, we thank also for the advices of our, from our ancestors, from our elders, which is the first in the core of the family. And we perceive that because it's the Maya cosmovision. And something which is very important are the kinds of, uh, in this case, uh, about agriculture. We have a calendar that leads what to do in the Maya population. It's about uh, culturing corn and other kinds of cultures. There are days to ask for, uh, for the productivity of our farm, to thank for the rain, the food, and we can also ask for a good saw and a good grape. And also we ask for forgiveness because of exploring the nature. We know very well that our feed comes from the mother nature, nature. So we every day ask for this food and we ask for forgiveness because of exploiting nature to get this food. And that involves a lot of our ancestral knowledge that teaches us that life is created by these connections and nets and it creates an harmony among us, human beings, and Mother Nature. So it is very important to highlight all these values that allow us to understand what's the Maya cosmovision. Those principles were left by our testers and we are, we continue strengthening them, showing and working showing our actions through a deep love for Mother Nature. We are contributing indirectly, of course, for the not, of, for the not extinction of the flora and the fauna and rescuing the native species in our regions, which is very important here, is that we understand our relationship with Mother Nature and us as a women organization We had this initiative of reforesting, of protecting forests, of conservation of water sources, implementing pro agroforestry projects, and work together with other organizations at the national level. We started showing what do we need to uh, get a tree. We need sun. We need the seed, we need water, and all these resources come from Mother Nature. So we need to be worried and to include it as a concern for us, for human beings, to keep this equilibrium, this harmony that show us what Mother Nature needs. 
this permanent interconnection that show us how it should be. The work we do here about forest conservation, self-sustainability, we should add to that uh, the traditional knowledge of medicinal plant use. We systematize ancestral knowledge from uh, the mothers of our communities to divulgate and to promote the use of medicinal plants for the new generations. We have a document with as a tool systematizing this, this knowledge to transmit those knowledge uh, received from our ancestors. With this work, we are helping to strengthen all this. We don't use the agrochemicals that are promoted by big factories and big companies at the national level and also on the world level in the social network. And many times technology is going on, but it consumes our, our knowledge and make us to consume international products. And I think this is how we see the Maya Cosmovision by the moment. And of course, in the local level, in the community level, Thank you, I'm with you. And exactly how I mentioned it in the beginning, as the president and the legal representation of this organization, we have to recognize in Guatemala, our country, where we have like very rooted our ancestral knowledge from our ancestors. And that's how we know the type of government that we need for our territories. And we have internal rules in our communities that in the majority of the cases, uh, they have been written, but they do have fundamental and elemental rules that um, proclaim the balance between mother nature and us as human beings. We also have um, social systems to develop the, um, the develop of the forest and their natural resources for us to have a good life in our rural communities. It's one of the main objectives to get to know all this work and all this process for all this work that we do collectively to develop our communities and our Mayan territory territories in, what, in Guatemala. These resources are very important to develop our communities in the social and economical manners. All the resources that we have are self-sustainable. And we have this identity from the different cultures in our own territories and the applications of these practices and these actions to the knowledge of our ancestors to manage and to control all the resources from mother nature. And we need to add that we have a lot of incidency to make strong this ec economical and social development in our communities. We have been doing this in a national level, working with our organizations in a second level, how to incorporate this respect and all these native species that they are in danger. We do have an industrialization model where we, they only recognize some certain species, species that are in danger. And we, or they leave behind all the other native species that they are in danger. And us as women, uh, it is convenient for us to use and to focus in, in this use of the wood as energy. 
and to use uh, natural fertilizers to our to our soil. One of the most important topics that we have been talking with our brothers, Medin and Uche, in this opportunity, we have uh, put in evidence these big communities and these big weaknesses and dangers that they are in Guatemala, the knowledge, all the practices, all the ancestral practices and the diversity. They have been losing their value because of the industrialization. Because like I said, there is a lot of brands in the uh, communication means and that has an impact psychologically. Because if I consume from important brands, I'm in a category in another level that makes us to lose our values and or the values of our ancestral knowledge and all the work as communities. We have been fragmented for a lot of political, political problems and also environmental pollution. Also the development of the agriculture and also mining and the systematically ex exploding of our resources in Guatemala is a big problem. For example, there are um, big projects for example, the transgenic seeds and those kill our harvests. And this is one of the roles that we are playing in an international platform to value, to rescue, to, sa to save these practices or native practices, because we know there are seeds in our plants or medicinal plants and trees and fruital trees. Also the basic grains we have to promote the agri-diversity, but we, if we're not gonna worry about this, if we're not gonna maintain this balance between the human being and the mother nature, practically, pra practically we are gonna be losing our seeds. And I think that these fights that we're establishing also as nets and webs and the national platform and regional platforms in a local level. It is very important to highlight that it's we keep fighting. In this case, as Amedi and Uche, for everybody who is present in this afternoon, sharing this moment, unforgettable moment for to celebrate Earth Day, we are gonna keep fighting to conservate our natural resources and fighting for the climate change and fighting for the loose, for losing our agri diversity. Also, not only for mother nature, but also for us, for human beings. And we have to keep this cosmovision for our mother nature. Maria de Pedro, thank you so much. Thank you for your message. Everything that you share, it was like an excellent introduction for the next panelist that is very related to everything that you just said. This is the decanalization of design. As you said, besides all these tries to uh, um, have only one model in economy and society and cultures, the um, indigenous people have fought and they have uh, been able to apply different concepts like um, sustainability. That is a very trendy uh, topic now in the cities, but in these communities, they have been doing this for thousands of years. And they have been uh, doing this design uh, with techniques that they try to preserve not only the people's life, but also in the life in the planet. We can take uh, without um, extractivism to think about a very sustainable design and to repair everything that globally we have destroyed and also to build a, a more just future for everybody. We are gonna start with this and I'm gonna present the panelists, Porfirio Gutierrez. Gutierrez, I'm sorry, is a textile uh, designer. 
Margarita Lorsutug, which is a social entrepreneur and president of Ticonet, and Paulina Garrido, which is the president of Tosepan. And we are going to start with Garrido. Yeah, he's connected from his studio in California. We can see him in the background with his materials. And I would like to, Porfirio, if you could share with us a little bit of your work and if you can tell us a little bit of the process about the elaboration of these textiles and how can you make sure that these textiles are sustainable for the earth? Hi, everybody. Everybody, hello. Uh, Sorry, uh, my Spanish is not very perfect besides um, I'm Mexican, but thank you so much for this opportunity. And I'm sharing my screen to, so you can see my work. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for taking the time for being here with us, for the indigenous people or for the indigenous knowledge. Our lives are, are an extension um, from our mother nature. This means that we don't see our mother nature as, as the owners of the land, but we are integrated and we are an integration to the mother nature. My work has been uh, focusing in preserving, preserving the ancestral practices that they have been stopped and to keep the ancestral values. The plants and the water, Mother Earth and everything that is moving in this world has life just like us. In this understanding, I learned this understanding since I was a little kid. My mom and my dad used to tell me, we have to have respect to mother nature because, because nature, it feels and it's alive, just like us. So we, we, don't, we don't cut down a tree just for doing it. It's because we have a reason to do this. To create a 200 um, variety of colors, it takes years of experimentation and research every season in the recollection of these plants and the colors can vi uh, be different. And this is because they received a lot of water or because maybe they didn't get a lot of water from the plants. And that's why each piece that is created on the workshop, it is really a uh, It's a very important piece of the season. I come from a family of musicians and dancers with a deep understanding of traditional medicine and agriculture. And just for being born in this family and this ancestral community, I received the gift of the knowledge of textiles. I, I was born in an environment in where our outfits are art. And I grew up in a, in a community where everybody wear the art. Our lives themselves are art. The art is very common in our town, in our people, that the modern world not, doesn't consider us like designers and artists. Maybe it's because they forget that be, to do art, you, you don't need a title, you just need passion and talent. My first piece was to do my first backpack. Well, more than a backpack was a bag to take with me to school. This when I was 12. Now I realize that the design, it is just a series of decisions, aesthetic decisions. Those decisions 
um, define your spirit and your face and and creates a dialogue between a modern America and an ancestral America. If I'm a product of immigration, when I was 18, I came to live in California in the USA. My life as a designer exists, thank you, first to the divine grace, and second, because I was born in a family of artisans, but I also discovered that I have a passion for textiles. I do what I do because I like it and prefer a decision, my own decision, and not because it was the only option that I have. This is for me the difference between just repeating a pattern or really to contribute to the development and preservation. This takes me to an obsession for rediscovering my Zapoteca roots, and it has been the strength and the mo motor, the engine, to promote my culture and the ancestral knowledge, even if I don't live 100% of the time in my country. This also reminds me that in my head is our head, our house, and there our ancestral no knowledge are manifested by leaving them and not just by theory. My work talks about the um, my actual situation in life. It's a balance between the ancestral and the modern knowledge. It reminds me about the trips that I used to do between these two countries and also the communication with the, my ancestors from the North. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It was really an honor to share this space with everybody. And I hope that this is not the first, and I hope that this is not the last time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Por Porfirio. This is impressive to see these pieces of art. You will tell us more, but let's go with Paulina. First, tell us what Tosepan does. It is big. It is Im impressive. All of the work that you do in this cooperative. And the other one is that you have a central concept that is the good living. What is for you the good living? And what is the contrast with the narrative with the good living in, from the capitalism stain of standpoint? Good afternoon, everybody. First, I would like to say thank you. Um, what design can do for being in this dialogue and this space in a in a day like today, so emotive, so emotional when we are celebrating the day of the earth, where basically this encounter is for us to highlight the wonderful things that we can still work for from the people to preserve our mother nature and our mother earth. My name is Paulina and yes, basically I will tell you that um, I'm hoping to accomplish the cooperative that I'm presenting right now, the Union of Cooperative Tosepan. It is in Nahuatl uh, language and it means together we will overcome. And this is something that we have been working more for 33 years. And basically, um, um, currently we are a cooperative of nine members nine nine members that were working in these islands alliance each cooperative has their own autonomy autonomy and it has their own legal figure and well basically which one is the reason for this union of cooperatives well 
this is the engine that moves moves us is to improve the quality of life in our from our members to advance to a better project of life that is good living uh, we in Nahuatl, the Yeli Midlitz. I would like to explain more about this concept from this or Mastewal Cosmovision. We are Nahuatl um, speakers. In this area, we are in the northeast mountains of Puebla and we have different lines of consumption and distribution, and we are different cooperatives, and something that I want to highlight. This movement in this cooperative movement is born through the social movement in the fighting of adjusting the prices of the basic expense for more than 40 years. And this was the motive that originated this movement I, here in the muni municipality of Quetzala, Puebla, for living in a, in a territory in where the factors that are more important are the, the government policies, a lot of land owners. The control weapon, the mechanism to control the population was uh, that gathered this movement to start. And again, the fight, the struggle have been long this way of 43 years. But basically, I would like to answer that uh, our motor, uh, the main concept of our cooperative is the good living defined for us from our cosmovision is the harmony, the equilibrium with ourselves and with nature. That's the good living to be well, to be happy with what we have, but especially taking care of our mother nature, of our nature. And that's what moves us every day. Basically, us in the Union of Cooperatives in 2000, we started working with a production model known as Cooperative This model, in Navajo, means uh, the coffee garden, the biodiverse mount. And I would like to comment that the majority of our, of the farmers that are members of our cooperative are small farmers with uh, land of half an hectare or one hectare. And our big challenge in our association is to get these small farmers to diversify their income working in those small lands. And we created this model, this production model uh, from uh, that starts on trees, on, with timber products, fruits, and some introduced trees as coffee. So the main economic activity here in the region has been for a long time before the 1890 uh, because the activity was uh, very constricted that uh, made us to start to diversify after the year 1999. Uh, and before that, it was only coffee. But after that, we started to diversify our cultures in a larger variety, and the Union of Cooperatives influenced a lot to get that diversification of cultures. 
one of our strategic objectives was the diversification of the incomes of the members of the cooperative and also the capacity building, the training of the producers. And I really like the participation of uh, our partner from Guatemala. I liked a lot what she said about Cosmovision and the good living. And I think the native peoples have a lot of similarities in that, in that sense. And there are a lot of ancestral practices that are needed to be replicated and repeated to continue taking care of our mother. That's why I can say I can contribute now and all this harmony with nature, it complements the good living. But parts of this good living need to be defined and the strengthen of our culture, but also promoting the sustainable home we want to, uh, to get for our members in the Union of Cooperatives. We are talking about, uh, about uh, 74 municipalities and thousands of members in our association of cooperatives. And well, for the first time, Plaqueta, this is my intervention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paulina. Now we are talking, we will talk to Margarita and I have two questions for her again. So. Uh, the same questions are, what are the practices and ancestral practices that were useful for you to protect the environment and what the cooperative you're working is, is about? Oh, you, your microphone is off. Classic Zoom. Good afternoon. Thank you for this space. I think it's very important to talk about, especially today, the Earth Day, since we live and the Earth give us our food every day. But I would like to focus on how the work of Ticonel, well, Ticonel was born in 2000. It started with 10 producers, 10 farmers. They started a, a forest project in a community, Sacala Las Lomas, where I live. They started developing activities of forest nurseries and also plantations. And about climate change, we are also developing value chain in, for the conservation of natural resources. Currently, we are we have 152 members in communities focused on the on Guatemala in the mountains, and we also generate income and jobs through commercializing textile products and also facilitating the access to the market to women. The design we are working on uh, was learned from our grandmas, our parents. We are working our own designs. The clothes I'm wearing now is the cultural outfit of our municipality. We are working, I started working in the textile section since when I was seven years old. So there I started, then I started to work in the textile art and we start to commercialize our products to the market. But also we are seeing that uh, the job we do uh, doesn't don't compensate with the with the amount of work we do. So we started to organize as a group of women. And then we started to create an enterprise and we call it part of, of the fabric. And it was an 
analysis, the result of an analysis of several communities explaining how we, why we call it like that, part of the fabric. And we explained that the work that we do is, has a lot to do with the work of, of with the human function. Like us, without a heart, we cannot function. But our work is also the heart of where we can work and where we can create our expectation and to relate all the designs we do with the environment and with the relation with our ancestors. Why? Because, for example, parts of our fabrics that we do, uh, it has a lot to do with the sun rays. The purple colors uh, are related to the darkness of the night. The dark, the violet, the blue also represents the cosmos. So all we work, all the colors of our fabric is related to all the relation with the Maya cosmovision. So as Maria Pedro said, she talked about the relation of us as human beings with our mother nature and all the work that we do, specifically as women. Also, all the learnings we had in the Association Connell, we are also contributing to the process uh, to, to the environmental conservation. Now we are implementing and we are working in forest nurseries. We are harvesting native seeds from the forest as, as uh, her partner say, we don't, we're not getting seeds from outside. We are getting seeds from our forests that are native and are well adapted to the environment where we live. We also have uh, agroecological spaces and we are implementing soil conservation. We are also working with agroforests. The soil conservation uh, is also being implemented. We are using organic organic fertilizer and we don't like to use other fertilizers agrotoxins that are affecting the mother nature mother earth and all we learn from our ancestors we are connecting that knowledge with the work we do today and because of that we are contributing to the environment, environmental conservation because we are not only thinking on how to consume, but, on, but also how to contribute to the conservation. Because since we wake up to the moment we rest, we are living on the earth. And the earth is what provides our feed, our food every day and preserving the earth it's also about uh, not killing that energy. I think our ancestors, they didn't use plastic bags. And today I think technologies and media have progressed, but also they are affecting our, our earth. And oh, us, our human beings, we are also being affected because all what we breathe and all what we use from the air, it, and all is related with the human being. It's also affected. We know today that there are a lot of diseases, cancer, diabetes. Uh, why, why all those diseases exist? Because our kind, our food habits are different and we are eating herbicides and a lot of fertilizers that were not used by our ancestors. They were, they ate natural food and that's why they live their long life. In our community are 
people that are a hundred years old and because they ate different. That's the analysis we do today, but it's not only analysis. We need to act too. We need to take action. We see on the social media about the Earth Day, but I think that it's more talking about the Earth Day that take, than taking action to really contribute to the conservation of our Earth. Thank you very much, Margarita. Before to continue, I would like to remind the public and everyone that are participating, all of you can make questions in the different platforms. We will see all the questions here and we will share some of these questions. Uh, now what you said, Porfirio, that moved me a lot. It's about your bag. Your first piece of art was your bag and that was a special moment for you. And I would like to invite you to make an exercise, exercise to remind a key moment in your childhood or adolescence uh, where you received a learn that was very revealing and that you continue applying and using today with your lives. If you have any history to to share with us. Who would like to start? Paulina? Yes, I would like to share a history, a story very beautiful when I was a child, very small when you start to have reason in your mind. I, I had this awakening when I realized that my parents started to, to select the corn in such a way that the more beautiful grains were separated. And I was watching all this process in each stage of what were, they were doing and and the end, I considered that was the end when I realized and asked to my parents what they were doing and what they were doing. They were uh, selecting the corn grains. They separated the core. And after that, I realized that the good grains were left uh, submerged in water, and after five or six days, the grains that the grain changed in size, and after a week, they took the grain, the corn grain, out of the water, almost germinating. And I saw that my parents with some incense, they were blessing the seeds. And after that, after following that, watching and go watching, I asked, I was very young, maybe three or four years. And I asked, and that was the learning the, about the process of germinating a seed. And they explained me why was the process that way and why they were blessing with, a, with an incense and what they were praying and they were thanking and asking for forgiveness from the seed because they were taking the seed to plant in the soil. And it was a very good experience for me because I was thinking when my parents were saying, this is how we take, this is like when we take care of you when you're small, we feed you, we change diapers, 
we breastfeed, this is the process. And there is a moment when the child starts to walk. That's what we will do with the seed. We will take in the seed to the soil, to the air, to form, to produce, to be a plant that will provide for us tomorrow. And that the learning is very beautiful. And until today, that's a practice that is being made, but also the taking care to the air and asking for forgiveness to the air. I think this is a way of asking for forgiveness. And you assume that the earth is part of you and the way how you take care of that air will protect you. That's why you need to ask for forgiveness. And because the earth will protect you. And that's how I took this, this learning, which is very important. And, and it's important for me to stay having this. At the time, I would like and I would like Margarita, Margarita and Porfirio to share this. Go ahead, Margarita. Well, uh, in my case, um, well, from my childhood, I remember that when I was seven years old, my parents, they enrolled me to a college, to school, and I didn't like to study. And I used to not like the school and I used to hide and lie to them that I was going to school, but I wasn't. So my parents used to watch me that I was not attending classes. So they were gonna let me do it, but I was, I just, I didn't like to study. When I was on third grade, we used to move in the urban um, area because of the conflict, the armed conflict. And we used to go to our communities because that's where we have our territories and resources. So when I came back, um, I started to gain more interest on studying, but my, my parents only took me to school until fourth grade because of the economical situation and also, well, um, because of a cultural mentality that, well, women, they don't they only they only need to know their names and that's it so sadly i i couldn't or i didn't have the opportunity and i i, I have shared that experience when i was a little kid that take advantage of the studies when you have the opportunity because sometimes when you when you want to study then you don't have the opportunity so i consider with all these spaces that the, the kids, the young people, that they have that opportunity to study that they take advantage of it because the opportunities, they, they pass by and they don't come back. So it's something that I remember a lot from my childhood. Sometimes I, I remember and I laughed and sometimes and I used to hide and not to go to school and I used to come back home and lie and say that I was in school. But sometimes, sometimes it gets me thinking but sometimes it also makes me laugh to remember that. Thank you so much, Margarita. I'm so happy that you found your way to do something for this world and for your community. So again, thank you so much, Porfirio. If you have another study that came to your mind, when I was a little kid, before I start to knit, I used to have sheep and um, goats, and I used to take care of them from school. One of the things that I remember and that it has marked me uh, to discover the cochinilla. In Zapoteco language, it's an insect that uh, grows in a cactus and you can see them in on my back. You can see them. 
how is you cultivate the uh, cochinilla, the wild cochinilla, which is an insect. And I discovered that the, what the cactus had to the, um, how can I say it? When you kill the cochinilla in a, in a certain way, you can appreciate the red color. So you can, we used to use the red color to paint uh, our toys and sometimes our own clothes. And when I grew up, I started to understand the meaning of this insect and its red color and the Mexican ancestors and how this has contributed to this insect to the cultures around the world. And this contribution in the Oaxaqueña community and Mixteca community to evolve um, of what it is today, the cochineal and this insect to us. Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna be back to about asking for forgiveness and asking for permission to nature. It's something that is not in the ed educational programs. We have been taught about the humans are with center of everything and if we work, uh, hard, we can. We have the right to exploit all the resources. How can you explain to a person that has has had this mentality all of its life that this model is very pro problematic, and we cannot understand each other as human beings, as isolated, isolated human beings? How can you explain this kind of thought that is very, it's very obvious? <laughs> Who's going to start? <laughs> I think that, uh, that I believe for me, it is very, it's about understand who I am and to understand the respect in the soil and the earth. And those are the base, that's the base. And how can we communicate that to the world? And I think that's um, specifically in my in my way of promoting my work and talking about my work is definitely it's been very hard because of this way of um, of seeing the things and the things in the world and I and I made a comment about this for me for modern world we are and the work that we do and what I do it's just arts and crafts, it's, it's, it's cheap. And it doesn't fit in the art world, in the modern international art world. So it's a constant, uh, it's a constant education and re-education on, on this. And it's really, it's very hard. It's very, very hard for people to understand this philosophy and this understanding of the ancestral people. Paulina Margarita. Paulina Margarita. <laughs> yes, um, I believe that in the first instance, it's very hard, but um, it's not, it wouldn't be so complicated. I think that to start with sensibilization with the sensibilization of, of the importance of preserving these cultures, these indigenous cultures that normally from the indigenous cultures is where we keep these practices, these ancestral practices, right? That uh, teach, uh, teach you, keep practicing. And they're also part of, of, of your life and of your, your daily life. And at the same time, they're taking you they're, they're taking you to keep taking care of for you to have this nature, this biodiversity that I also speak from my territory. I'm from a green territory. And because those practices, they have been going replicating and replicating since the knowledge of our grandparents. And obviously um, this type of knowledge it doesn't match, it doesn't fit with the capitalism movement where everybody is immersed. Everybody, 
we are immersed in this uh, individual model where it is taught that accumulation of goods and power and accumulation of economical resources, even if you damage the environment, even if you damage the society and et cetera, I can keep talking about all the disadvantages that take us to the logic of this capitalism model. I think that it's, it's this is the time to replicate and to speak out and also talk about uh, these models uh, of alternatives of solidarity and alternate economical models of resistance, resilience. We are not going to, um, we are not gonna implement our models. This is little by little, this is very slow and this is it has been a lot of years that we have been living under this capitalism model. I think it's time of starting through forums to replicate this knowledge, to allow us to take this step to another civilization for, us, for all that people that hasn't had the opportunity, that hasn't had this approaching uh, with these type of models, these alternative models and in solidarity. So for them to do it and they can reverse and take a look to our or, or, original people where they're actually, we keep this ancestral knowledge and that is important. And we have this successful model and we want this model to continue because we will continue contribute, contributing to the environment in our hands. It is that we can replicate for the future generations, just like us, we are inheriting an environment just like the way we have it right now. In our hands it is that tomorrow it is better, but we have to contribute everybody and the first step is the sensibilization to talk about this, to have these dialogues, to have these forums, to allow us to take, to arrive to that point, to that balance of achieving this, this empathy. And that's what I can contribute. The more, the better. Something else that you wanna add, Paulina? And Margarita, I'm sorry. Yes, sadly, the, the capitalism and its model has made us believe as indigenous people that uh, we can't, like we cannot be va uh, value in our work, in our communities and sincerely uh, through the production and the production of work and the small pro producer, producers that also feed the country, not only in Guatemala, but in other international countries. But it is very hard to sell to our, our work that the community is doing. But however, we have the organizations to us uh, to create or to raise awareness, to implement these models of work and to also to switch the mentality of our, the mentality of our small communities to, Uy, I think that we lost Margarita. The internet is betraying us one more time. Well, while well, she's trying to reconnect, so we can take the idea that she left. We have uh, a question from the audience. What do you recommend from the panelists to, to live in harmony with mother nature, just like the way you do it in your communities? What do we have to start doing as humanity and specifically as designers? I don't know what, what, what gives you this question from the audience. I would like to answer if you would like that too. Can I answer? Yes, of course, go ahead. 
I believe that um, for all the people that they haven't got the chance, it is the moment to look for an approach to the communities. And, and also um, look for ways of living and internships in different regions and communities, indigenous communities that allow intern internships, the five or days or a whole week that allow us to, to know all this way of living that we have the original people and the way that we live and how we take care of the soil and how we celebrate a ceremony and also etc for them to start learning and learn about the communities and the indigenous communities and in a second moment well they can have the action of starting replicating these good practices because i can i can say about this in the original people, we have practices very good and there is gonna be not very good practices, but I think like the good practices are the ones that they need to highlight and they need to be uh, replicated and take them again and reproduce them to make them stronger. And those are the, the steps we need to take. Somebody else about this topic? Anybody else? Yes. I consider it also important to recognize the after the agreements of the peace agreements about interculturality that allow us as Mayans, as people, to do this interconnection and this living with to know all this work from the communities, from the Mayan communities. And something very important, and maybe more in the future, if this is going to be important to, to dream to create uh, Mayan universities with a focus beyond so we can have this university life and it's gonna include all the Mayan knowledge that and allow us to have a sustainable development of these communities because we always visualize this cultural focus in all the things that we do as people, the Mayan people. We are a, a, a culture that is behind, but no, that's not true. We have very clear, a very clear example that if, if they apply everything that we're talking about right now, In the, in the life of the universities, we need to contemplate the, within this focus. I feel like the youth is going to change constantly. Thank you so much, Maria Pedro. This is very important to question these educational models and design and redesign new educational models. This is, this is an excellent idea. Now, to continue about this, about this topic, I would like to ask Perfidio a question, taking advantage uh, that one designer uh, made this uh, question. I would like for you to share a little bit about your creative process and how it's linked with the nature, how, how it is inspired by nature. Well, um, a piece, it is created from imagination and a topic, a, a topic that you can talk about. Very often, very often for me, it starts there. And well, from there, um, it is regulated. It is gathered every October, September, November. We collect all these plants and some plants, some fruits, and those are grown in our house, in our gardens and we are all always using um, we're using these colors um, as a repetition and all these pieces that they will be more uh, like how can I say like art like functional art pieces for the wall 
the same way. We have to talk about the topic of, uh, and we and we start to write about this text, and we put together the pieces, and we start to see some tones and colors that they can illustrate these designs, and we start drawing. Me myself, I still use well because I never went to an art school or a design school, but I use just pencil and paper, and I start to. Uh, uh, to do sketchings and, and we make them digital and we put some color, it goes to production and they start producing the pieces. But really, the connection with nature has always been the essential of having these values. And those values can be, can be seen in these pieces. It is really, it is a very long process. Sometimes people even could say, oh, can you do a, a, a rock or a piece and I need it for the next week? That's impossible, really. The workshop works uh, works at the, at the time piece, which is a slow pace. And that's the cultural value. We shouldn't, we shouldn't follow the path of capitalism, of creating pieces in a massive production and that doesn't work, it's not sustainable. It doesn't really have a future. So that those are the process for us to create a piece. And then also, and at last, that conversation, the, from an, a very a very modern America, but also a very ancestral America. Like you can observe in these pieces, in these designs, they have this feature, very ancestral. And all these pieces, they can be appreciated in Mitla, in the, in the fragments that you can see in the community, but you can also see a minimalist a minimalist influence in this part of America that it could be a little bit urban like the USA. Thank you so much. I have another question for everybody. How can you imagine, how can you imagine these strategies for all this knowledge to not be lost and to be preserved? and to be passed on the new gen generations. It can be very attract attractive, the capitalism mod model, right? And to believe this story from capitalism. So how can you implement this? Can I begin? I think the most important here is to continue uh, following the youth, the youth to continue adding and creating to this reflection together with us. But also I think that the alliances, the strategic alliances with social organizations as cooperatives and civil organizations, that kind of organizations that are looking for from a sustainable focus approach to continue uh, with the prevalence of a cultural and environmental aspects, designing these alternative models to continue generating local economies in harmony with the environment. So I think that it can be generated uh, through dialogue and forums and discussions, uh, the one we are having right now, which is very interesting. And I think that many people should be able to participate and to listen to know these kind of projects that are being promoted. As I told you, we are in, a, in this organization for 40 years, but are all organizations that are working and building for more time. So to continue 
building these nets of solidarity in alliance from the north to the south, from the east to the west, in a way that we are visi visibilized and our work is visibilized, 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 and we are at, at least that's what I can contribute. The alliances with these organizations will be very strategic. Anyone else to close before closing? Maria? What, what I think uh, this approach should be keep with permanence in our strategic plan as community organizations, the same way, way with organizations of second level. The third step uh, in one of the of the plans is to think on governmental institutions as the agricultural ministries and the agencies that authorize the licenses to hydroelectric and dams that are starting to work in some departments, for example, in Guatemala, as the National Institute of Forests, some governmental agencies, they have these tools, but in general, they are left behind because lack of, of funds or lack of political willingness. Porfirio, Margarita, do you have any idea about the transmission of knowledge that could work as a conclusion because we are running out of time? Margarita, one strategy which is very important from our house is the one to teach all the traditional and ancestral knowledge and the knowledge we've got from our ancestors, teaching that those knowledge in our home and also in education, in schools, are issues that are fundamental to be taught with youth, with children, uh, to for not losing all this knowledge that came from our parents, also to work in nets of organizations, the community leaders. These issues are fundamental to be approached, also working with the youth. Nowadays, sometimes the ways of thinking of our youth are totally different to ours, but uh, I think these issues are very punctual and should be approached from our organizations, from our communities, for not to lose our culture and what we are, um, our way of living. And we cannot change our mindset because our traditions and our practices are very rooted in the reality aspect indigenous peoples. I think this forum is very fundamental to get our message and our knowledge to learn or listen and not keeping that only with us, but also to be useful as example for other organizations and for all the people that is connected today. Thank you very much for this space. I I'm very pleased to be conversing in this in this room. Thank you very much to all who are connected. For feel something very fast that you would like to add? Yes, I think Margarita said it all very well, and also the other uh, partners they emphasize about the alliances and about a question from earlier, how to learn from indigenous people. It's not, also, it's not only to spend time with indigenous communities, but also to understand the respectfulness, because uh, if not, we continue with this spoiling of the knowledge and exploiting of the knowledge and the shapes, the ways. I think I see that a lot in our community in Oaxaca. And I think that's very sensitive and it's extremely important. The issue is to finally get to uh, 
enrich each other with a mutual respect and not to go to the communities with other ideas as taking out the knowledge and exploiting the knowledge that it's more noxious that good. Well, with those ideas, with this, those contributions, with the reflections, we say uh, we have a lot of things to take home, to think, to discuss, and I hope these ideas will be discussed with our circles and with our friends. Thank you very much to Margarita, Porfirio, Maria, to all people that is watching us. Don't go out because we will have a selection of short films. One is about a tradition in danger, about the arrival of out Amazonic outfits in the Amazon. And also there is another short film about the recovery of an earthquake in Indonesia. And the last one is about body painting, traditional body painting. Stay with us to watch this and stay because at 7.30 we'd have another panel about cultural appropriation and will be Shazna Aguilar, Guillermo Chester and David Hernandez Palmar. See you later. And once again, thank you very much to the panelists. And please keep here spread the message to get more people connected and see you later. Para mí es artístico un arte porque no son solo líneas tiene un significado que va más allá de, de solo línea. Para mí la historia es algo que no se debe olvidar nunca. Seguimos la historia. Hay una necesidad de trabajar sobre la cultura. Fuertemente hay una necesidad. El gobierno siempre va y sale y dice, no, en Panamá tenemos una ley que protege a los indígenas. Pero cuando te vas a la práctica, y el ejemplo está clarito. El mismo sistema educativo no está diseñado para que los pueblos indígenas se mantengan como tales. A la escuela, en la escuela, dentro de los perímetros de la escuela, en el salón no se podía hablar en Vená. Hay muchos niños que no hablan el en Vená. Hola, ¿están todavía todos ahí? Hola, yo vivo acá. Yo también. Bueno, muchas felicidades a todos, estuvieron muy inspiradas Pero Lo que y muy, estamos muy tratando, intentando de, de rescatar aquí es precisamente esa conexión con la identidad. Muy orientada eh, Es una comunidad, muy al estar cerca de la carretera, que, recibe lo mucha que de presión de, nos de otra cultura. Que se nos fuera eh, el cambio en la educación, por porque hay muchos años solo se ha enseñado en el español y no en el idioma. Y ese valor, lo que estamos tratando es de recuperarlo con los niños. Y también, perdón, yo estaba aquí viendo cómo regresar aquí a la, a la llamada sin interrumpir el video. Este, sí, fenomenal, plaqueta, felicidad, buenísimo, la verdad. Sí. No, 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 pues con, es, con estos panelistas fue, estuvo todo perfecto. Todo aquí tejen. Totalmente. Aquí totalmente, toda la comunidad está muy artesana. La, la, la hizo muy bien, Así la verdad. Como, un gran como uno que madre, mí, cuando ya las hijas van creciendo, uno la va motivando a hacer el arte también. Sí, yo también te quiero felicitar, Plaqueta, porque estuvo es súper bien tu seguimiento que, que diste a, a, el bosque, a lo que ellos sí, iban diciendo y, nuestro, y, y como fuiste madre. orientando la conversación. Gracias. <risa> 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 <risa
eh, pues, bueno, que regreses a la cita. Nada más, ¿qué data? Sí, voy por agüita y... Nada más, ¿qué data? Nada más, ¿qué data? Nada más, ¿qué data? Nada más, no vi mensajes de alarma ellas coordinándose solas y, es importante porque y todo ha ido muy bien. Estamos extrayendo la madera y de eso vemos que bueno, la verdad, mí, estamos bueno, ya le quito el recurso no para, para, ir, que no para ir a la... Sobre todo el de la otra, muy nervioso con cosas, pero... Me se va a mantener todo, vaya, como un árbol de eh, protección. Y todo ha salido muy bien. Protección para bien, producción, bien la quebrada. Claro. Así que mejor es dejarlo dejarlo quieto, que, que siga reproduciendo como semillero. Les estamos agradeciendo que todo, todo salió muy bien Porque en esta comunidad. Hay, hay bosques en pie. Significa entonces que tenemos una receta para seguir contribuyendo y mantener estos bosques. Y ahora vemos que todo... Bueno, yo ahorita vengo y regreso en cinco minutitos, han... este, pero la idea es estar de regreso eh, a las 7 de la tarde que es cuando ya se van a empezar ahora, a sumar eh, como este, grupo estamos reforestando David, Yasna ya y eso eh, es nuestra y, visión ahorita pero regreso en unos minutitos como grupo de mujeres en vena si sí, yo también me voy a levantar un ratito la generación Aquí que viene subiendo veo. necesitamos educar de manera como no han educado nuestros ancestros con el bosque por el tema de los diseños, el material que se usa, todo tiene que ver con el bosque. Forma parte también de, esa, de ese conocimiento que se, tra que se está transmitiendo en nosotros mismos. Pero como dicen nuestros abuelos, si desaparece el pueblo indígena del bosque, el bosque va a desaparecer. Chapa mana tiasca, paina paina tiasca chinare que ni kain chapa ya kona ganya. Uh, ne empeche ni matopo waranga wa tanchi. Wa chama mana tiasca paina kalerina ora roya kona trix nara mai kan roya. Chila chapa ra igual se chipaina chora ringa aliasca. Chiga kuchusha ga, luchusha ga. Wakta kana ora ina. Makanamihasikere, <tose> Más afuera se dieron chicas de candy stuff, candy, se lo narece chica de Sherat. Yo pisa chica, más como le tiene ya cupata, te tiene lo más que ya que le indisponaste, ricuere y más. Yo se la metía ya cupata, le tiene oro, cosa, tío, nada, ya nadie pagó nada, te tiene más.
Awalnya tu parti mana ni lah cakap aku nak ikut film ni. Saki na orang kena kena orang dekat aku nak wawa aku nak aku nak minyak aku nak mana ya cina ini masa waktu na mai kang royas. Ya ya si kai top anju palal ya si waktu apa si top pas keringan. Macam mana tu sih? Si ya si. Sekarang saya nak cuci kat saya nama suka mandana suka saya nak curarina. Canda wari merah itu cakap nalar tak show uliera wa. Ima uliera ni kan? Ima apa? Pi pampalin. Si guna tu tarap bagas kau nak kaiti mana tiak pi kan? Lea capa mana tiak pi kan? Ima itu tu pangun apa ina sekarang? Siapa yang pengen kau senara ni apa? Ima tu puat atau tak tak pi? Kau wah seperti tu kau mana kaita? Mai kan apa sih aje? Mana ya cah sih waktu tak tersenyap kasna? Ciu ciu piteri mai. Cita aliman tu tara tak masih waktu sih hari nanti ya. Cewa ya cura sih gaya. Cewa sih gaya mai leh sih mai leh sih. Cak ini nang indi punya, iske punya, kim sa punya cak ini ni alit. Yo pas ni aruku mana kau nangnya? Kuaran tayo cuan yo cari ni. Kau nak aruku yang garas itu yang ni zaman ni. Tiada wajah ni kau nak kau ni macam sapa ramai cerser tu sapa ramai macam cerita ni. Tara bana tayo cuan nama macam macam yang lek tasyas ni. Imawa tamana tara punchi ni sha pay moyo gona tamay tumaskasha Nyoka nchi shu chi moyo gona tara puna manda ang sa yae Nyoka si yae chashkane May malik chi may shiwa gona ta na sha surku sha chari shu Chagra tara sha chibi tara puku chari masali ga sakiri may pa kumana Mana tiyanga chanong masa wa sha punja ma kangona riko nga chi kaita Mana mejor mana riksi nao ma igona chi ruya gona tiya shi gata gai Kuna nyukaya ya kaya cha chiupi, ang sa nyukwa siya chishkani liyan cha ima tono waktana, ima saliuchuna, ima tono karang partimanda rikusha wakutana. Nyukanchi, 
Ñukanchi kayta sa kungarisha sakisha rishkanchi kazi winguna. Ñukanchi ispanchi chi ruyata ga ñukaya yachachushke nishka ruyata ispana man imangawa chi ruya pay gusto ta luchurichun pay kara ama ruya itia pilutaringawa maska chikara chi ispak pirandi ga gusto ta chi intiro ruya randi lugu luchurin chi asha ga kasna balsa kuinta luchurin. Si si asha miri kona ngai manda lucu na si pay kararandi tat suk sur kusha apa nani? Cari oni kai nyuka punyung gawa nyuka ya ya kuinta was kanya oparu kona kai sami punyung kana oni punyung sha taksa seri ulai tat putu tuku was kai lanchama cirai nyuka rai ga shuk experience ya mas kanya ko. Lanchama ta mana ya cegarani nyuki masa waktu nata kai 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 kapat nyuka ya waktu si kuara fundale nyuka mana ya cegas kai. Nyukalata tapurani imasa nyukayata nirani kayo kuanda kachao inisha fasi lak pishina tapu kashkaran chi awa laktay tiagruna gona nitukon chi randisha nip a besu ke randisha ni chi setenta, ochenta, yapwa karo mao ni nao chi kuna nyukas shamurani kaibi nyukayaya yachichuachu inisha imasa lanchama waktanata chi shamushkai mana fasi lichang kai lanchama kara waktana y puso punya de ancha nacta ni que ella un pario y es que hay punta rueta cuchucha, luchuna su punya está de chasnaranale tota de ancha, callan de cote de ancha o actangaba chasna y chivias mana fácil chara a picha y anga casnamanda o su partiana o actancha y rico una man pa y punta o maima sapiak su parte maraco ni otro cara gashka si te rico ya está capi Si acha está acá en la casa, casa no tiene teleporama, mana se haga piti piti, octo octo, se quieren mana ya se agrego, mana fácil se agrego. Si hay que escuchar, que 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 hay que escuchar. Alhamdulillah selamat semua pak. Atau ada ini. Amat. Kontinu. Dadain, 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 dadain bapa, dadain. Cucu saya. Tujuh baru lahir kemarin. Perempuan. Tiba-tiba kan rrrr dia itu gempa itu datang. Saya sedang duduk di sini itu sampai jatuh karena di goyangan itu kan. Itu jatuh. Kayaknya berugak seperti ini. Kandas di tanah atapnya, kelihatannya waktu itu. Kalau selesai gempa biasa, tidak apa-apa. 
kita periksa juga di dalam tidak apa-apa, kayunya pun tidak ada yang patah, tidak ada yang rusak. Ini atap sudah baru tiga tahun ini, apabila lima tahun harus diganti. Ya, ini alang-alang sekarang susah kita dapat. Nah ini pintunya harus rendah kan dan tidak boleh tinggi supaya jangan nanti masuk rumahnya kayak orang lari kan harus jongkok waktu kita jongkok masuk kita menghormati tetangga dan semua barang-barang yang berhasiat yang ada di dalam rumah itu kayaknya kita jongkok waktu keluar kita menghormati tetangga yang ada di luar bahkan sampai sesama manusia pun kita harus hormati dia waktu keluarnya sehingga rumah adat itu tidak boleh pintunya tinggi harus rendah jelek kalau rumah adat kalau kita anu itu pak nah yang paling berperan ini disebut inan bale kalau bahasa anunya ibu rumah Gitu. Di sini kita simpan tombak-tombak yang berhasiat, senjata-senjata yang berhasiat kita simpan di sana karena karena tidak boleh dilangkahi kan. Nah, kita simpan di sana, ya. Nah ini ini rumah adik ini. Tapi dapat bantuan dari pemerintah itu rumah kumuh, didirikanlah rumah kumuh itu di sini, gitu pakai ya tembok seperti itu, pas gempa hancur, itu hingga sekarang ini kita minta rumah kayu, ya sekarang dikabulkanlah permintaan permintaan kita itu hingga sekarang ini akan dibangun rumah kayu. Tapi sudah pasti dapat rumah kayu. Sudah sudah, kayunya sudah ada. lihat rumah yang bagusnya yang kuatnya kayak seperti ini itu bisa hancur empat puluh persen cuman itu aja kelebihan Kan waktu itu rata seperti ini kalau dulu rumahnya di kecamatan Bayan ini. Sampai membunuh juga tidak pernah kalau dulu. Cuman sekarang ini yang kedengarannya aduh ngeri kalau kita dengar. Tapi ya karena ada program pemerintah rumah tidak layak huni itu kan. Akhirnya ya apa yang kita turuti aja. Tapi nyatanya ini dah habis dia sekarang tinggal rumah bapak aja iya Kami masyarakat dusun desa Bele ini pada awalnya ingin rumah yang namanya Rika yang terbuat dari 100% kayu itu. Nah, tetapi kan e, kalau kita menunggu itu konon ceritanya sih e, karena proses kayu ini yang sangat sulit gitu dan mendapatkan kayu yang berkelas itu kan harus betul-betul Ya nyari di mana tokonya di mana gitu. Tetapi apa daya saya tidak mampu, tidak tahan lama-lama tidak punya rumah. Akhirnya saya saya pilih rumah yang seperti ini. Tapi 
tetap saya yakin ini adalah bisa menjaga saya dan anak istri dan keluarga saya. Nah, cuman harus harus kita perhatikan jenis besinya seperti apa, ada spesifiknya, ada ketentuannya di situ, ketebalannya berapa, nah, termasuk atapnya juga seperti apa. Sesungguhnya di desa Bele ini ada pesan-pesan sesungguhnya dari orang-orang tua dulu kita. Cuman kitanya sebagai pemuda ini, saya bilang hampir sok tahu sih iya juga gitu. Tetapi sok sok ingin ke kayak kayak orang-orang gitu. Termasuk saya ini ingin kayak orang-orang yang teman-teman saya di luar sana yang punya rumah bagus itu. Karena kan kita kadang-kadang malu terserang. Terserang kadang-kadang malu kalau kita keluar melihat kondisi di luar itu oh, beda sekali gitu di saya rumahnya hanya berdindingkan pagar, hanya terbuat dari bambu, atapnya terbuat dari alang-alang, terus tidak ada kamar mandi, dapurnya di situ, ma apa, makannya di situ, tidurnya di situ gitu. Tapi ternyata di balik kekunuannya itu, di balik keterbelakangannya, kelihatannya gitu, ternyata di situ mempunyai makna yang sangat luar, luar biasa sekali dengan kejadian gempa yang kemarin. Di desa Gumantar ini terbanyak korban meninggal pada kejadian itu sekitar 48 jiwa. Setelah kita cek dari 48 jiwa, kita cek tidak ada yang rumahnya yang kayak kayak rumah adat di dalam. Enggak ada rumahnya. Ternyata rumahnya benar, rumah putih yang terbuat dari batu terbuat dari batu bata, dicor dan sebagainya terbukti bahwa pesan orang-orang tua dulu itu rumah batu itu lambat laun akan menjadi musuh anda Hari ini kita melakukan mempahat rumahnya Malokak Perumba dan pedangannya Malokak Perumba, beruga agungnya Malokak Perumba juga. Hari ini kita pahat. Yang tinggal di sini itu sama Lokak Perumba. Nah, Malokak Perumba ini fungsinya untuk menjaga kelestariannya di darat. Itu mewakili seluruh dunia. Cuman ini sebagai simbolnya 15 hektar itu mewakili dunia. Bahan rumah ini kita ngambil dari hutan yang sudah ditentukan. Itu yaitu di sangga, di montong sangga ini. Di luar itu tidak boleh. Dan kayu ini selalu siap di sana. Kapan-kapan aja diambil, gitu, selalu siap. Di kawasan hutan adat ini tidak, tidak boleh, apalagi di dalam pawang itu ada apa nama mata air, tidak boleh. Tempat pengambilan itu dikhususkan.
pas bencana kemarin itu kan tidak ada sempat ya, ibunya atau anaknya numbuk padi atau pergi ngeler tidak sempat kita turunkan persiapan yang di atas itu di lumbung itu nah, itu tidak tidak sewaktu waktu eh tidak sehari hari kita turunkan ini saya punya kalau yang sebelah sana adik punya gitu ini lumbung ini tempat menyimpan padi terutama padi bulu yang hasilnya dari sawah yang kita kerjakan tadi bisa juga sampai dua tahun ya itu masih enak di mata mungkin itu anugerahnya Tuhan kepada kita diizinkan kita itu tidak seperti kayak kayak orang rumah-rumah orang lain kita bersyukur juga memang hidup seperti inilah rasanya sangat damai sangat aman nilai reot tapi itu yang baik sebenarnya kan bisa dia bertahan dari guncangan gempa yang sangat dahsyat itu 7,0 sehingga kalau seandai kata abang masih posisi di sini pasti digini ini pasti Bu, bukan begini tapi diginiin karena belum ini suhu so, gede gini lagi sama lah Jadi kalau kita berpikir secara apa ya, secara merasasi, secara uh, alam itu tidak bisa dikaji. Ada orang bilang apa ya, tahyul seperti itu. Jadi kita ikut aja gitu, dan kok bisa terbukti gitu. Tapi kan harus kita berpikir dari sekarang, kapan lagi kita berpikir, kalau tidak dari sekarang, bahwa harus kita mampu uh, meminimalisir kejadian-kejadian seperti apa, dampaknya seperti yang kayak kemarin itu. kedamaian itu tidak produksion Ricardo Carlos Indahnya. tenemos a David Hernández Palmar como atemuan kita incluir como ah. panelista por favor itu yang menyamankan kita itu kemauannya rumahnya jelek seperti itu tapi kita yang mau pasti kita nyaman pasti kita senang karena kita yang mau bien pues gracias Hola, hola David. ¿Cómo vas? ¿Se escucha bien? Sí, te, te, te escuchas y te ves muy bien. Memang tempat ini dari sejak dulu. Es que estoy Bukan en un restaurante donde como una sopa muy rica en el terminal de buses al lado de Pancalita. Wow, ini sudah dua. Hay confinamiento a las ocho, entonces tenemos que estar tanto. Kan pitu misalnya itu, como karena el apartamento, el apartamento queda como a una hora sin cola, porque eso es para el batán, es para el norte, entonces bueno, ahí vamos. Okay. Un gusto, un gusto conocer. Tenía miedo que me pidieran eso, pero bueno, voy para eso. Ricardo, también está Guillermo Jester en Atendis, también es un panelista. Y eh, bueno, ahorita que Plaqueta regrese. Hola, yo ando por acá. ¿Qué onda? 
Oye, este, Yasna ya está teniendo problemas de conexión. Ok. Porque vive en la sierra y pues está intentando, este, dijo ahorita que iba corriendo a un lugar que cree que tiene mejor internet. Entonces, okay. pues bueno, esperemos que eso se resuelva. Sí, sí, ya he estado eh, en paneles con ella donde desaparece. 